Hey there guys, welcome back to another Fly Tying Friday. Uh, tonight I'll be tying a Project Cicada Fly. This fly was developed by Fly Fish Food, the guys over there, uh, Curtis Fry and uh, Clark Pierce, I'm not sure which one exactly, but um, I think I saw Curtis tie this one. Um, anyways, I, I came up with my own little wing design on these and I uh, just thought it might be helpful to share, especially with the Brood X Cicada Flies coming this year. Um, I'm definitely going to have a, a bunch of these in the box um, and hopefully capitalize on that. So hopefully it'll be a, a cool time to be fishing this year and uh, we'll jump right into this. And first off, we're going to tie the body. So we'll switch camera angles and go to that. So the first step to tying this cicada fly is uh, creating the body, this segmented body. So we do that before we even put a hook in the vise. Um, you can tie up a bunch of these bodies beforehand, but you just do this in the hand outside of the vise. So what I'm starting with is some six millimeter foam. This is a uh, six millimeter black craft foam. I have here some, uh, this is like your standard craft foam from a craft store. Uh, it's two millimeter. You, hopefully you can see the difference there. It's much thicker. So what we're gonna do is uh, I, I started off cutting a bunch, I cut off a bunch of these uh, sections and this is about a half an inch by an inch and three eighths long. And that's just, uh, I mean, you can make these bigger or smaller depending on the bugs you're seeing around. But uh, that's just kind of my starting point. And what I'm gonna do is I come up about three quarters of the way up the foam. And then uh, that's where I start my cut. And then I just cut a slight angle down towards the, uh, the center to make that tail. Same thing on the other side. I don't necessarily want to go to a point on this. I want it to be a little bit rounded off. And speaking of rounded off, we're going to go down the edges too and just cut off the edges of all the foam. And this will just give it a kind of more realistic look, help give it that round body. Just like that. And the face, we're also gonna take the corners off, kind of round this face a little bit. Just like that. And then we're going to hit it with a lighter. And what the lighter will do is, if you just gently hit this with the lighter, You'll take away all those sharp edges and you don't want to hit it too much or this foam will melt and start to smoke, but just gently touch the flame to it. And then what you can do is while it's still a little warm, roll it in your fingers a little bit, just like that. And it gives it that nice round look. And we want to do the same thing to the face of the fly too. Just kiss the foam with the the flame there and then just press real quick and then you get like a nice rounded body just the perfect little cicada profile uh, next <clears throat> next we're going to add in this se segmentation that you see here with some orange thread so like I said I'm just going to tie this in the hand off the vise and you just start your thread on the foam like you would a hook. Let me try to zoom in just a touch more here for you. There we go. So, you just wanna create kind of a wide band of thread. And then we'll just trim off that excess thread and keep going. So then you just, you want to take, to get to the next segment, you want to just take one large advancing thread wrap, one turn around and then squeeze down on it. And you'll just get a feel for how the spacing needs to be for these. And go ahead and create that second band. Same thing, we're gonna make one more advancing thread wrap. 
And we're shooting for four segments on this fly before we get to the hook. All right, so there's that now. So the, probably the most challenging part is actually whip finishing this because you feel like you gotta have six hands to do it. But just gonna whip finish right over top that last thread uh, base. And if you wanted to, you could get real fancy with this, make it look a lot cleaner. Um, if you wanted to, you could whip finish on every segment so you didn't have that advancing thread wrap. But I don't think it's really worth it because what you can do is if, you, if those thread wraps really bother you, first thing, I would tie it so those thread wraps are on the top side of the bug so the fish won't even see it. Also, if you just take a Sharpie and hit just those individual thread wraps, not a big deal at all. And they literally just disappear on that black foam once you do that can't even tell they're there so once that sharpie dries you really um, won't be able to tell anything so we're going to go back to the hook and put this thing on a hook and tie the rest of the fly all right guys now that we got the uh, body tied um, from the other angle we'll go ahead and start on the hook here and what i have is a daiichi xs10 in size four this is a really heavy wire hook and then I'm going to tie with uh, UTC 170 in fluorescent orange, or sorry, not 170, but 140 in fluorescent orange. And first thing I want to do is just lay down a nice uh, substantial thread base on the shank of the hook. You want to give that uh, foam something to really grab to when we glue it on. Just trim away the thread. And so now we're going to jump over to our body that we created. And I'm, what I'm going to do is just take a razor blade and make a slit right down the center about three quarters of the way through to uh, fit that hook shank in. So. so you see there, I went nearly all the way through but left still some significant foam for it to um, you know, be durable on the top. So I'm going to come in with some uh, Loctite Ultra Gel Super Glue. And this stuff is awesome. I use it on all kinds of flies. But just lay a bead right down the hook shank. And one thing you got to remember too is to have your thread about in the middle of the hook shank, right about where the point of the hook is when it's hanging down. Because once you put the foam on, you can't move your thread back and forth very easily. So I want to make sure that's in place. And then we're just going to slide that foam on and don't be afraid to kind of force it on there and then from the underside you want to just give it a lot of pressure and squeeze it together for a second and you'll feel when it starts becoming solid right there it's starting to catch already so all right, there we go. We got it on the hook. And now we just want to make some thread wraps to create that last segmentation. And you don't want to worry about putting too many thread wraps right here because we're going to lash a bunch of material down and add quite a bit to those thread wraps. So just like that. So next we're going to go tie in these wings and uh, I'll switch camera angles again here as well to show you how I create these wings. It's a pretty cool technique. So we'll do that now. I just wanted to go over how I've been uh, making these synthetic wings for the cicada fly. Um, and you can use this for a large variety of flies, the same technique. I'll show you, uh, basically I'm doing a wing burning technique. And that's not like a new technique by any means. Um, these, these have been around for smaller flies using feathers as a, and using wing burners to create a really specific shape. You see it on caddis flies a lot. They sell uh, like little brass caddis fly wing burners, but I came across this material in Walmart actually and uh, It's called organza Material and it comes by the yard there at Walmart. I bought enough here that lasts me a lifetime just a single yard 
it was only about $3.99 and um, when I started messing with it I cut into the edge and I realized that this material just becomes unwoven very easily like it basically just falls apart and beco just becomes unwound um, and it's like it's basically like woven flashaboo like micro flashaboo it's really cool stuff and it looked like it would make a perfect wing but when I cut it to shape like if you just uh, if you just cut a piece here off you'll probably be able to see I'll just pull it apart and it literally just like breaks in half it's not durable at all I mean it wouldn't even last casting so I was trying to think of what I could do to kind of come up and with a way to use this material um, without it just falling apart so I thought of the old wing burning technique with used on feathers a lot and what I did was I went out first I looked up some uh, cicada flies online and I just freehand drew out some uh, some cicada wings to the shape I thought looked right for the size fly I was uh, tying so I, I drew those out and just sanded them down and made two identical pieces same size same shape and what I came up with was basically doubling up this material so I folded it in half and then right on that crease I go ahead and lay the one half and then the other half on the back side and I just hold it together and you just want to make sure those edges are lined up on both sides perfectly and what I'm doing is just trimming away the excess material but leaving a little bit of edge to the material and you just want to try to keep that shape and keep the uh, the forms from really moving around so hopefully you can see that there I'm just trimming it along the edge and if some areas are like way too thick I'll go ahead and trim those up now but you don't have to get too picky with it at this stage that's what's nice about this technique they just come out perfect pretty much every time so what I'm gonna do now is just take a lighter. I'm holding tight pressure so those two pieces don't move. I'm gonna do one last checkup, make sure the, the edges are still lined up perfectly. So we basically just have a sandwich of uh, organza material. So now I'm just gonna take a lighter and go around that whole edge and burn it down to the wood. Just keep rotating around there. And what happens is that material gets burnt like you're burning the edge of a rope, the end of a rope, and it seals off all those woven pieces and melts it together. But when it hits the wood, it stops right at that shape. And I just take my finger and run down the edge to try to flatten it out. So that's it, and then you just pop the uh, the wood pieces apart and you're left with a perfect little cicada wing that's very durable it doesn't come apart um, you can tell like I'm giving a good pull there and it I think it's gonna hold up really well if you want to you can get creative and use a marker and try to make like the little veins of the wing and things like that but and this, this technique can really work on anything. I'm going to experiment later this summer with, uh, you know, making some, making up some new forms and uh, using some like dragonfly wings, making, uh, making some dragonfly wings, other terrestrial wings, even grasshoppers. They don't necessarily have that shiny of a wing, but it's a pretty cool technique. Just wanted to show you. Uh, we'll get back to tying the rest of the fly here. Alrighty, now that we're back, we'll uh, tie in these wings. And I like this long leading edge should be on the outside if you look at a cicada it's really how they uh, how they lay and you can lay this straight down the body like I've been tying 
or you can make a spent cicada wing and tie it out to the side, which may be better if you're actually having spent cicadas falling on the water. So go ahead and tie that down. One on my side. And the other on the opposite side. And actually overlap them just a touch. There we go. Pretty good. Just make a few thread wraps there, make sure they're secure, trim out that excess. Uh, next, we're gonna do a little overwing with Sparkle Emerger yarn. And all this is really for the fishermen um, to, to just help you see it on the water. Next, I'm gonna take a little bit of this orange parapost material and put that in front. Again, just a visibility thing. Trim that off a little shorter. And next, what I'm gonna do is make a little cap uh, for the top. And basically, this is just two millimeter craft foam. And I'm just gonna cut a little oval out. You can see I already cut one out of it right there. I'm going to cut one about the same size and give it a little bit more of a three-dimensional look. Clean it up a good bit. And you just want to put some decent thread tension down on that. And then we'll whip finish. And I like to make sure my whip finish ends on the bottom on this fly so I can hit that exact knot with some super glue at the very end. So that's pretty much it for the tying portion. Now we're gonna add a little bit of um, extras here and throw some eyes in. And all this is, is uh, mono eyes. I'm using the cheap stuff from Walmart. Um, this is yeah, 50 pound Omniflex, just the real cheap like $1.50 stuff. And the 50 pound just gives you some more thickness um, to build up those eyes while you burn it. And all I'm gonna do is take a lighter and burn the end until we get a nice ball. And I'm gonna make two of those. So there's my little finished eye. And I have the other eye there in my fingers. I'm just gonna cut that in half. Uh, but first, I'm going to take a little bodkin needle and figure out the exact placement of the eyes. Wherever I want the eye, I'm going to just poke into the foam and kind of twist that and widen that gap out. And so I'm coming in a little bit of an angle. I want it to be offset right there and about the same placement on the other side. And push in as far as you can go there and just kind of wiggle it around. Next, I'm going to trim this mono, relatively short, um, right about like that. And then just hit that with a little bit of that super glue. You don't need a whole lot. And poke that into the hole we made with the needle. So there's your one eye. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Just like that. And one final thing you can do is hit those eyes with a little bit of this orange Sharpie. It doesn't add a lot to it, but it gives a little bit of color.
But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the uh, Project Cicada. And actually, well, that's not quite it. I missed a step. I apologize, folks. But um, you can see on this other fly, I added some rubber legs in. So I'm just gonna do that real fast. No big deal. We'll just reattach the thread here. And I, I use uh, this living rubber. If you guys, if anyone out there ties bass jigs, you know what living rubber is, but uh, it's a lot more economical than the uh, rubber legs at the fly shops. But this is the barred brown and orange. Black and orange would be better, probably. Um, just stick with the color scheme. But this is what I had on hand and I think it still looks pretty good. So we're gonna tie in a leg on this side and I like to pull them down because cicada legs are kind of oriented downwards. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. And typically, like I said, you would tie this, these in as you, uh, when you put that cap on the top and before you move forward, but it's no big deal because it's kind of the last step in that whole process. So you can just add them in later if you forget like me. Um, so then we'll just whip finish that again. All right, so there's the legs and you can keep them long like that, um, but I've been cutting them pretty short. Something like that. So there's the uh, the full profile that looks much better with the legs so but that is it and that is my project cicada with the little wing variation like i mentioned um try it out get creative with it uh, hopefully we have some epic fishing coming up for us this summer this early summer so but anyways hope you guys enjoyed and we'll see you on the next one god bless